know, and so we can't, you know, we got to be careful about that, dads. Let's not live vicariously through our children. <laughs> Whew. And uh, so, but, th- but these are some of the influences of the kingdom that we don't even think about because it's happened so subtly, so quietly, so under the wraps. So, you know, so in, in uh, what was it, 1900, 90% of the world was thought to be in extreme poverty. 1960, 30% of the world was thought to be in extreme poverty. Today, 10%, 10 to 15%. Today, there is more food per person on the earth than there has ever been in history. Ninety percent of the world's population, 25 years old and younger, are now literate. They can read and write. That's never been the case before. And so all of this, why, why is this happening? There has never been a time, there's never been a nation that has poured more money and resources and people into missions worldwide than America. Do we have problems? Yeah. You know why? We got people here. You know, I remember when I was in the Air Force, I worked in the medical field, and I was like showing up at the hospital. I was like, man, this place would be awesome to work if there weren't all these sick people here. <laughs> right, Alex? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> it was kind of a running joke. but <laughs> But literacy is way, way, way up. There's a thing called the Flynn effect, where every decade the aggregate IQ goes up three points worldwide. Why is that? You can't go to any country where there's not Christian missionaries and and people speaking and teaching as a mission. Today, the continent of Africa is thought to be 40% Christian. Now, are there places like Somalia and Darfur that have some tragedy? Of course, of course. We're talking now... We're talking averages here, okay? Every country will have its own statistics. What I'm trying to do is give you the 50-foot level to recognize and realize the kingdom of God is an advancing kingdom. Look with me in Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. This is a prophecy from Isaiah that's a messianic prophecy five or 600 years before Christ. We need to understand this. Just like I said, the language of the scripture... The language of the Spirit is type and shadow, parable, allegory, metaphor, imagery, patterns. Patterns are another thing you'll see in Scripture. All right. Also, another thing to consider, I like to categorize things. Scripture comes in several categories. One is historic. One is prophetic. One is symbolic. One is poetic. One is music. One is colors. One is numbers. So these are some other aspects and categories of the language of the Spirit. And if you will understand this and look for those markers when you read the Scripture, what has happened in this country is because a lot of us have been in church, we don't read the Scripture with a fresh eye. We read the Scripture with a stale eye. And when you read the Scripture with a stale eye, you read into it rather than draw out of it. And so when we read something that we're familiar with, we blow through it just...